Yo soy una hija del Inti Sol, de la Pachamama y del Inti Sol. Yo soy hermana del pueblo Coya, del Inki hermano y de la Aymara, de la Aymara, la Aymara. Yo misma me guío a la libertad, de la Yo soy una hija del Inti Sol, de la Pachamama y del Inti Sol. Yo soy hermana del pueblo Coya, del Inti hermano y de la Aymara, de la Aymara, la Aymara. Un indio me guía a la libertad, de la Aymara. everyone welcome to this video today I'm going to paint with gouache I want to paint a sketch a portrait sketch and I'm going to limit my color palette by using just four colors I'm used to painting in gouache in a very opaque way where I use very little water because I love that brightness that gouache can give you. But today I want to approach it in a different way. I'm going to explore the medium a little bit. I'm going to use a lot more water. I'm going to use gouache a bit more leaning towards the watercolor spectrum or the way that you would paint with watercolor. So adding a lot more water, allowing layers of paint to paint over one another, allowing colors to blend in, in a more wet on wet technique. And I'm going to see how that feels and if that works for me or not. And as I mentioned, I'm going to limit my color palette. What's great about doing something like that is you explore also what the paint can do. Different paints have different color intensities. So some paints are actually stronger. The pigment inside the paint is stronger than other paints. Knowing color theory is great, but in the end, you need to use the paint that you are going to paint with and to see what the tangible qualities of that medium is and also what the quality is of the type of paint that you're using. And it allows you to explore new types of color. Another thing it actually also does, it creates that cohesive look that we sometimes struggle when we're painting. Just because you're using actually a tonal range of colors that are interconnected with one another already. 
I'm going to base it on a primary color scheme. So I'm going to use three primary colors with white. The specific colors I'm going to use is yellow ochre, crimson red, Prussian blue, and titanium white. Yellow ochre is one of my favorite, favorite colors by far. I adore this color. Yellow is a beautiful color for me, but it can tend to have a very light value and therefore it sometimes need another color to anchor it or it needs a sort of a, another color to allow the yellow to shine but not disappear, if that makes any sense. But a yellow ochre, it's deep and rich it's this velvety color and at the same time it's yellow it's a yellow that can stand on its own two feet and it's a magical color because you can mix so many different skin colors and flesh tones with yellow ochre and with your other mineral colors as well but especially yellow ochre i think if not white white is my most used color but yellow ochre is definitely the second most used color that i use i'm going to read to you an excerpt from an article on thoughtco.com the article is titled ochre the oldest known natural pigment in the world and it was written by k chris hurst and posted on July 3, 2019. Ochre is one of a variety of forms of iron oxide which are described as earth-based pigments. These pigments used by ancient and modern artists are made of iron oxyhydroxide, which is to say they are natural minerals and compounds composed of varying proportions of iron, oxygen, and hydrogen. Other natural forms of earth pigments related to ochre include sienna, which is similar to yellow ochre, but warmer in color and more translucent, and umber, which has guthite as its primary component and incorporates various levels of manganese. Red oxides, or red ochres, are hematite-rich forms of yellow ochres commonly formed from aerobic natural weathering of iron-bearing minerals. Natural iron-rich oxides provided red, yellow, brown paints and dyes for a wide range of prehistoric uses, including but in no way limited to rock art paintings, pottery, wall paintings, and cave art, and human tattoos. Ochre is the earliest known pigment used by humans to paint our world, perhaps as long ago as 300,000 years. Other documented or implied uses are as medicines, as a preservative agent for animal hide preparation, and as a loading agent for adhesives called mastics. Ochre is often associated with human burials, for example, the Upper Paleolithic cave site of Irene Candida has an early use of ochre at a burial of a young man 23,500 years ago. The site of Paviland Cave in the UK, dated to about the same time, had a burial so soaked in red ochre, he was somewhat mistakenly called the Red Lady. Before the 18th and 19th century, most pigments used by artists were of natural origin, made up of mixtures of organic dyes, resins, waxes, and minerals. Natural earth pigments like ochres consist of three parts, 
the principal color producing component, the secondary or modifying color component, and the base or carrier of the color, which is almost always clay, the weathered product of silicate rocks. Ochre is thought generally to be red, but in fact is a naturally occurring yellow mineral pigment consisting of clay, siliceous materials, and the hydrated form of iron oxide known as limonite. Limonite is a general term referring to all forms of hydrated iron oxide, including guthite, which is the fundamental component of the ochre earths. Ochre contains a minimum of 12% iron oxyhydroxide, but the amount can range up to 30% or more, giving rise to the wide range of colors from light yellow to red and brown. The intensity of color depends on the degree of oxidation and hydration of the iron oxides, and the color becomes browner depending on the percentage of manganese dioxide and redder based on the percentage of hematite. Since ochre is sensitive to oxidation and hydration, the yellow can be turned red by heating guthite burying pigments in yellow earth and converting some of it to hematite. Exposing yellow guthite to temperatures above 300 degrees Celsius will gradually dehydrate the mineral, converting it first to orange yellow and then red as hematite is produced. Evidence of heat treatment of ochre dates as early as the Middle Stone Age deposits in Blombos Cave, South Africa. Ochre is very common on archaeological sites worldwide. Certainly, Upper Paleolithic cave art in Europe and Australia contained the generous use of the mineral. But ochre use is much older. The earliest possible use of ochre discovered so far is from a Homo erectus site about 285,000 years old. At the site, called GNJH-03, in the Capturan Formation of Kenya, a total of 5 kilograms of ochre in more than 70 pieces was discovered. Ochre was part of the first art of the Middle Stone Age phase in Africa, called Huysenspoort. The early modern human assemblages of 100,000-year-old MSA sites, including Blombos Cave and Klein Kliphuis in South Africa, have been found to include examples of engraved ochre slabs of ochre with carved patterns deliberately cut into the surface. Spanish paleontologist Carlos Duarte has even suggested that using red ochre as a pigment in tattoos and otherwise ingested may have had a role in human evolution as it would have been a source of iron directly to the human brain, perhaps making us smarter. The presence of ochre mixed with milk proteins on an artifact from a 49,000 year old MSA level at Subudu Cave in South Africa is suggested to have been used to make the ochre liquid, probably by killing a lactating bovid. Wow, that is very interesting. And I must say it would be great to say that I am using the same ochre that the people who made all those beautiful paintings in Lascaux and in the Drakensberg have made, but my ochre is most definitely a synthetic ochre. And if I can remember correctly, I think they started to produce synthetic ochre since the 1920s, if not earlier. I find the origin of pigments and color and where the medium that we as artists use, where it comes from historically, very fascinating and profound. And I believe it adds to the meaning of the colors as we use them today. But I'm not going to chat to you about all the colors that we're using today. Um, I decided to just chat about ochre. And ochre, like I said, is for me just a very beautiful color. So I'm pairing this ochre with crimson red, which is a very 
intense red, but it's it's hinging more on a pink type of red. So if you would have to compare it to your vermilion red, your vermilion has a lot of yellow in it, a lot of bright yellow in it actually, and it hinges more toward a bright type of orange, deep red orange. So uh, this crimson red is going to give us also in terms of flesh tones, a lot of um, human flesh, our tones have got very rosy and reddish undertones and that rosiness the crimson red is just so beautiful to bring out those blushes that occur naturally in skin and then our third color from the primaries is prussian blue if you had an ultramarine blue you could use that as well but what i like about this prussian blue is it is something that's going to allow us to be able to mix very dark and intense colors without using any black. It's always going to remain a very deep blue undertone. And that is why I chose Prussian blue as the third blue. I actually only have two blues in my kit. The other blue is the cerulean blue, which is very lovely but for the purposes of skin it's just too light and it's i'm going to miss as i said this intensity this darkness that i'm looking for especially because i'm limiting my color palette and i don't have black to depend back on so the prussian blue is just going to allow that intensity to come through very nice and then of course i have white and there's nothing as beautiful as titanium white. Like I said before, today is about exploring, about having fun, and just enjoying the process. So now I'm using these three primary colors along with the white. So these four basic colors and I am mixing them in varying degrees, in varying ratios to create the different types of colors for the skin tone and the hair and for the whole sketch, actually. And just having fun. Um, it's always a nice surprise to see how many different colors you can find.
m'a proposé de devenir son amant Elle est riche et elle est belle, mais moi je ne veux pas de problème Son mari c'est mon directeur, moi je suis son chauffeur Si je deviens l'amant de la femme du patron, c'est dangereux Sont diaboliques malgré leur beauté angélique. Quand une femme est amoureuse, elle devient très dangereuse. La femme du patron m'a dit si je refuse, elle ira dire à son mari que c'est moi qui lui fais la cour. Même si je suis innocent, j'aurai de gros ennuis. Cette situation, je ne trouve pas de solution Car dans cette affaire, moi je ne sais plus que faire Puis dans tous les cas, je n'ai pas tellement le choix Si je dis oui c'est imprudent, à cause du patron Mais si je dis non à la femme, elle va se venger Mais dans la vie, il 
ça qui peut te frapper, tu sais pas qui va te tuer. Lui, Satan, tellement mauvais, il a blagué à temps et elle, il a plus le monde de Dieu. Ça chauffe, ça chauffe, ça chauffe, ça chauffe. Dieu pour sauver son monde, il a envoyé son fils unique avec un plan de bataille. Jésus est arrivé, il a créé beaucoup d'églises. Assemblée de Dieu, attaquez tous les maquis. Royaume de Dieu, attaquez le cinéma. Protestant baptiste, et il se promène pour prêcher. Tellement fâché, il a créé des églises. Au bas des plages, là-bas, on porte pas chez lui. Ça chauffe, ça chauffe, ça chauffe, ça chauffe. Un jour, moi, je passe un serre à Satan, il m'a appelé. Il dit Jésus a la foutaise. Il a pris mes maquis, il a pris mes cinéma. Aujourd'hui, tout va finir. Satan est arrivé dans un kimono noir. Tiberland dans son pied, son nez était percé. Tellement Diba, il ressemblait à Goliath. Goldorak, on dirait un cyborg. Jaïs, c'est là Jésus est arrivé Dans un kimono blanc Ses barbeaux dans son pied Cheveux bien coiffés Tellement petit, j'ai dit Satan va le tuer Ça chauffe Ça chauffe Ça chauffe Ça chauffe J'ai des jambes de Satan J'ai des jambes de Jésus Il n'y a pas eu où vêtu Le Naga est inséré Ça chauffe Ça chauffe Tous les pieds de Satan Jésus a bloqué, coup de tête de Jésus, Satan a griblé, le Niaga était mortel. Ça chauffe, ça chauffe, tellement ça chauffe, tout a jamais été sorti. Abobo est venu, comment s'il était présent, même le bataille était témoin. Ça chauffe, ça chauffe, j'ai des jambes de Jésus, ouverture de Satan. Jésus n'a pas d'endin haut, un petit crochet, le Goliath a pris KO.
ไว้สมาไว้สมาไว้รุดักปะกมาดูกะลีเอาจียอนบินกะตามูอันนี้มันอันนี้ยอมจิตุมียามบาบีดูมาคนงูจัม
Mai Pasir Wai. Oh. The portrait sketch I'm painting today is of an author, Ingela Urfis, and she published her first book um, just last year. It's titled Dreirafir. It is an Afrikaans book. I would love to read an excerpt from her book for you, just to make her a little bit more alive. It is going to be in Afrikaans, so if you don't understand Afrikaans, <laughs> uh, you can hear what it sounds like a little bit. Dis nie lank nie, of Roosie stoep is vol neskierig is. Ek groet en word hier en daar een of twee bekend. Sommige onthou ek as ek die naam hoor. My ou skoolmaat het kinders op een streep en ek wonder vluchtig hoeveel sou ek en Johannes nou al gehad het as dinge anders uitgewerk het. Die vrouwe is dit eens dat ek een jonger weergave van ma is. Hul oog gaan die heel tyd ondersoekend oor my lyf. Soek seker vertronk brengkies. Toe die mense uiteindelik koers kry, kry Roosie mond ook koers. Oor wie getrouwd is, met goeie manne, oor die wat kinders gekry het, maar nie getrouwd is nie, wie se manne nie werk nie, en wat naweke al vrouwe rondjaag, wanneer hulle te diep in die wijnkan gekyk het. Een meisiekie van omtrent 12 verskyn in die deur, een prachtige kind. Kom nader, lappies, kom groet vir Antie Sanna, sê Roosie. Dis my kind, die enigste nes ek. Kom nou, lappies, roep Roosie weer. Antie Sanna, des is langs ons geblei, maar sy was die laaste jare in die tronk. Ek bijt op my tande. Genade, maar die vrou is aarg. Die kind kom staan in die deurkosijn en kyk achterdochtig na my. Draai dan om en loop die huis in. 
Ach, sy was nog altijd een skaamkind gewees. Waai Roosie met die hand. Met de maas soos jy, sou ek ook permanent een skaamkind gewees het, is ek lus om te sê. Hoe lang het jy gesê was jy nie tjoekie, Sanna? Het ek al gesê? Wonder ek en besluit om haar nie te antwoord nie. Waar bly antipoppie hulle nou? Vra ek. Daarna by om dries, Johannes het mos een nekie sy steenhuis hier verhaai en sy maag gebouw met die geld wat hy die myn uitbetaal het. Die oom is ook al dood. Roosie sig. Ah, dinge het nie uitgewerkt tussen ons nie. Hy was te in sy eie wereld en sy obsessie met sy eeuwige skilpad het my moe gemaak. Het ek haar nou recht verstaan? Dinge tussen jy en wie? Lappie sy pa, man, jy ken hom ons. Roosie, praat jy van Johannes Nielsen? Ja, toe hulle nog hier langs aan by Gert geblei het, was ons in een soort verhouding. Ek voel my kop begin draai. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.